this is it. The number of Star Wars sets I've yet to build is getting smaller, but there are more on the way because my Lego Star Wars May 4th order still hasn't arrived yet. So here we have the Lego Star Wars 75204 Sand Speeder set, and this was originally released in 2018, and it was only around for pretty much a year, so it was quite short-lived. It had a retail price of £35 or $30, and I think if it was released in today's world, it would probably be a similar price. It includes two minifigures, no named characters here, but we've got Sand Speeder Pilot and Sand Speeder Gunner. And even though it's got a box art from the sequel trilogy, it you know it's just totally kind of unrelated to that, but I think it's a cool-looking thing. Based off the snow speeder, of course, just with a nice tan desert color scheme, a little side build, and of course, Space Snake. And on the back of the box, it shows you some of the little play things you can do with it. But I just love the little funny scenes they put. Here we got the one of the guys shooting at the snake because he must be really scared. Maybe he's related to Indiana Jones. Inside the box, then you'll receive one instruction booklet, one pretty small sticker sheet with only three stickers and three numbered bags. Wait, hold on a minute. What's this plate doing here? That was just loose in the box. All of these bags are sealed. Pretty strange to get just one of them, isn't it? Wait, oh, what was this? It's the other panel inside the bag? What happened there? Obviously, this set has been sealed since 2018. Perhaps it was packed up in 2017, so for seven years, this part has been just that, like that, in the box. That's so strange. I'm sure that should have been inside the bag. And here you can see how each bag makes each individual build, and then you put it all together, and you get the finished result. And I've just realised this set is so old it doesn't have a QR code to scan for the LEGO Builder app so I can't earn any insider points from this. Finish the first bag with our first minifigure there, a couple of spare parts of course, but look at that, doesn't that just look old school LEGO design? It's so blocky and weirdly pointed and shaped, it's got a nice old school feel to it. So I've got to bag two and it turns out that plate was supposed to be loose after all. And yet the same plate is in the next bag anyway. That's just really weird. Just finished bag two. We've got one half of the wings done. On to bag three with our second minifigure, the all-important snake, our side build, and the other wing. So now that I've finished building it, what do I think? Well, first of all, I like everything that's going on here. There's just so many good stuff. The minifigures are great. The side build of the moisture evaporator, pretty nice. It can like work perfectly in any little Tatooine diorama you might have going on. The grey snake, just a cool little colour, really. And of course, the sand speeder itself. Nice little build. Let's take a look. I like this more than I kind of expected to. I do think it's a little bit shorter than I imagined it being. You know, it's quite cute in the way that it's a bit short. It's a little bit fat, but it is, you know, quintessentially a, a modified version of a snow speeder. You can definitely see, you know, where the changes have been done. No grappling hook, though, which is a little bit of a shame. I think that would have been more fun to play around with rather than just this single stud shooter on the back which can turn side to side but obviously it's stuck in that kind of up position having a grappling hook instead i think would have been more enjoyable and just look better to be honest with you a couple of stickers on the side to give that kind of worn paint detailing it's the same on both sides but not on the inside even if they had a sticker that was tan but with just some more line detailings on it or something just to give it a bit more of a textured finish I suppose it's fair to say if you do own Lego Snow Speeder from around this time, around 2018, that you would notice some very obvious similarities and then some uh, differences, of course, with the fins being a new addition for this Sand Speeder here. Now, I don't have a Snow Speeder to compare it to, which is a little disappointing, but if I do get my hands on one in the future, then I will definitely be comparing the two. But I do like the added texture they've done here with these elements here, just to kind of, it gives it more texture because obviously most of it is tan and dark tan which suits the kind of desert color scheme they're going for but otherwise it does make it look a little bit plain perhaps looking at it like this and the canopy piece is a print on there really good print although the color isn't perfect because obviously that's supposed to be tan and you can see it's just a little bit different to tan but otherwise it's a nice high quality print that's a sticker on here another thing i like is how they've used the modified plates with the rail on just to kind of enclose the gap between where the wings attach because otherwise that would have been something i would complain about and i'm sure many others would have as well but using that piece to close it up is pretty good sure there's a little bit of a gap down here but that's not too bad honestly this would have been worse if it was left exposed and you may notice all oh, the wings look a little bit flimsy i mean there is some wobble there they're not going to fall apart except now if you pull it apart it can but maybe that's a unintended play feature you know your sand speeder gets shot down by the bad guys and your wings fall apart but otherwise well, there you go you can see how that's connected with the technic axles there and it squeezes in like that so you can kind of see on the underside it is secure 
And yeah, unless you really pull it apart, they're not going to fall apart. There is a little bit of flex, but that's just kind of how the parts are. And uh, another thing on the underside, got these inverted tiles here, just kind of help it glide across if you're having it on a smooth surface. And you've got the two spring-loaded Flickfire missiles here. They look a bit blocky. They're not really integrated that well, I would say. It's good from the side because you can't see it all that much. But from the front, I feel like it's almost an unnecessary thing. And I guess in a way, it's nice to have kind of, you know, the three different versions of simulated weapons that can't fire, the spring-loaded shooters here, and then your stud shooters, which I think are just the most annoying little things ever. But it is what it is. You don't have to use it. Wish it was a grappling hook, but I said that. Anyway, as for the interior details, you can kind of lift this off in one giant piece. And this canopy is kind of connected with the hinges, but it's not really intended to lift up individually. You, you, you know, you can do it, but you'd have to really put your finger down here and lift it up and it is kind of yeah it wants to break so it's not meant to because it's rubbing against this part here it's only connected this way because that would be the only way to connect this canopy so you do lift up the whole thing which is nice i like it it's simple it's smooth it's effective space for two minifigures in there of course traditional snow speeder style back to back and then you have a little storage compartment so you can store their minifigure weapons or your studs for your stud shooter in there and they can be safely out of the way. Also inside, you've got some printed console pieces. So you've got the targeting one on there and another little control one there as well. Pretty nice. Too bad about the green showing through. That's a little bit unnecessary. They could have done that with tan or black or any, you know, <laughs> color that would blend in a bit more. But the green's just a little bit obvious. But sometimes Lego do these random colors just so it's easier to put together and find the parts. But yeah, that's kind of my main criticism because otherwise there aren't really any other unsightly colors everything blends in with the color scheme so when you open that up to, <laughs> it is just a little bit unfortunate but the thing i like the most about this is its color scheme the fact it's not a gr another gray star wars ship really stands out to me and this is what it looks like with the minifigures inside they do have to lay back that's kind of common even in today with lego to fit minifigures inside the small spaces so that's what they look like it does look a little bit awkward with them lying back so far especially the pilot the gunner, not too bad, but you can't really see them. Well, maybe, but, you know, we're, we're kind of used to that sort of thing. And interestingly, the pilot minifigure is attached by... Oop, I pulled the helmet off. She's attached with two studs there, but the gunner isn't attached with any studs at all. He's just kind of loosely sitting in there as the console piece overlaps his legs. So you kind of have to tuck him in, lay him back, and there he goes. And I pop their weapons inside that storage compartment. A nice little craft. Let's take a closer look at those minifigs. Now, they do share the exact same torso and leg prints, but I'm not too bothered because I think these look really good. Some great print quality there. Nothing on the feet or on the arms, but it does go into the hips. Some consistent colours there, I think, and it lines up pretty well. Yeah, nice and detailed for what could just be another basic grey suit. And then the same printing on the back as well. And as you can see, peeking out from the bottom of the helmets, they do both have alternate faces. The gunner here has a rather confident and determined look on his face. Whereas the pilot, she's a bit more, you know, optimistic, but kind of a bit more calm and collected. As for the gunner, I really like his kind of shocked and scared expression here. It's very expressive. Yeah, really nice one. And then the pilot, she looks a little bit angry, but still not as emotive as the gunner, perhaps. And I'm going to have to show this side build at an angle just to fit it in the camera's shot. But we've got a moisture evaporator here. Pretty standard build, but, you know, it looks the part, does the job pretty well. And, you know, like I said, it could work well on a Tatooine or Jakku setting. Nice. Can kind of go anywhere for Star Wars, really. And it does have a play feature. So the storyline based off the box art is that you have your sand speeder. They're coming along. They're doing some target practice. And they're trying to shoot this. So they would shoot this with your spring-loaded shooters underneath. Let's see if I can get it, shall we? Nope. I've lost that bolt. Okay, let's try again. Let's see if I can get it. Well, it hit it, but I didn't knock it over. <laughs> so, you know, you can keep trying with that. And in case you do lose one, you do get a spare one included with your spare parts. So, yeah, the idea is you knock this over to destroy it, deactivate it or whatever. But, oh, no, you release the great snake from underneath the rock. And that's why your gunner is so scared. You know, they've landed to check it out, make sure everything is as it should be. They've deactivated it. And dun, 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 he tries to shoot the snake. And I guess he misses. Or at least that's the story I got from the back of the box. As for the spare parts, there's nothing too exciting, and there's your studs for your stud shooter. So, I'll be honest with you, I kind of bought this set by accident on eBay. I was bidding on it, and, uh, you know, one thing led to another, and I ended up paying a little bit more than I would like to. 
As I said, this had a retail price of £35 here in the UK back in 2018. And I paid £55 for it in 2020. Was it the end of 2023, I think? Yeah. So, um, it was a little bit pricey. But it still holds up to today. Like, I could just release this set as it is today. And I think people would still like it. Even for that same similar price point, I think. But what do you guys think about it? Are you a fan of the sand speeder? Did you like the minifigures or the side build? I mean, sure, it's nothing too special, but it works. It gets the job done. What do you guys think about this one? Tell me in the comments. I'll see you next time for another LEGO Star Wars review.